Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Beacons 360 here on Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Seth Dorensky. I'll be your host, taking you through an inside look of what's going on at UMass Boston Athletics. We'll have interviews with coaches, administrators, and student athletes, and an inside look at what UMass Boston Athletics really is. We'll take a quick break and be back with our first ever interview here on Beacons 360. So let's get to it. I got the heart of a champion. I got the heart of a champion. I got the heart of a champion, and I will not give up. Give up why I've been fighting all my life just to get a little taste or a slice of that pie. I train hard to play hard, even on my off days I stay on to rise above the weakness that I pray on. I'm over for the sunlight till the day's gone. The early bird gets the craze, and the bookworm gets the brain, and I'ma get it all. Welcome back to Beacons 360. My name is Seth Dorensky, joined by men's soccer head coach Jake Beverlin. Coach, off to a 5-0 start despite not having your entire roster at any point yet this season. What's been the key to your success? Uh, I think they've just been working hard. They haven't uh, let any off-the-field issues yet get in the way, so I think that's been pretty good. Um, and they just kind of come and go about their business, so I don't really have to monitor them too much like I did last year. You guys just took home the Chow Classic out at MCLA, a 3-0 win over an undefeated Union team, and then a nice victory over MCLA yesterday. Take us through this weekend. A lot of different guys scoring in two clean sheets. Have to be happy with the way the defense is shaping up. Uh, yeah, I thought they played very well on Saturday against Union. Um, they were probably the best team we played so far. They were similar to a, a Scranton uh, or a Nichols who we played in the NCAA tournament the past couple of years and just you know couldn't put it together then. But I thought that they're, uh, they're a good team. Uh, but I, I thought we were a little bit better on the day. Um, obviously, we scored three and they didn't score any. Um, and then we were able to get up on MCLA, I think, two or three nothing in like nine minutes, and the game was pretty much over. So um, we play a lot of guys because they've all been playing pretty well. So there's no reason not to. One of the guys who's had a lot of success early on in his career, O'Kane Williamson. People on campus are hearing about him, haven't gotten a chance to see him. 6'3", 215. Why is he so difficult to stop? Uh, he's, well, obviously he's a little bit older. He's, he's a man. Uh, <laughs> he's a full-on grown man compared to you know playing just playing some young boys. Um, and it's not just he's big. He, he's he's very good with the ball at his feet. He's athletic. Um, he has a bit of a soccer IQ. Um, and when he doesn't drift, he can uh, he can be very good. You guys have relied on a new look formation this year. Three in the back. How is that sort of shaping up? And how much more do you have to work on to really get that to where you were in seasons past? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been going really well. It's kind of what we went with so far, and unless we think that it won't work and get someone, uh, we'll, we'll go with it. And I just think it allows us to get our best players on the field all at the same time, is, uh, where someone else, something else might not. 5-0 and on the season, but you get your first conference test this weekend against a Plymouth State team that gave you issues last year on Senior Day, defeating you guys before you <coughs> answered back at their place uh, in the LEC semifinals. Can you give us a bit of a preview on that contest? Um, yeah, it's a bit of an early game. It's it's a noon kickoff up in uh, New Hampshire, so we'll have to get up pretty early um, and, and travel up there. But they have a nice field. It should be a good game. They're they're a good side. They're coached well, so it uh, this should be a good game. They're organized, and um, you know we just gotta gotta be disciplined because they do have some good players. Along with Plymouth State, the next weekend you have Rhode Island College. Is there any benefit to maybe getting some of these better teams early on in the conference so that maybe you're a little bit less banged up? Um, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're pretty banged up right now. We've, we've been missing quite a few kids, and we, we've still been doing pretty well. Um, you know, in years past, we go into October, and we're banged up then. So it's, it's going to happen anyway. I don't think it it matters when you're when or where you play them. It's just kind of you got to go with what you got. I'm sure they'll have some guys banged up too. So it just, just kind of is what it is. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time. The Beacons open up conference play this Saturday at noon at Plymouth State. We'll be back in just a sec with our second interview here on Beacons 360.
UMass is very public service focused and it piqued my interest and I started doing more research on it. I'm very focused on what can I do to make the world around me a better place. My name is Lydia Grasso. I'm a junior at UMass Boston studying sociology and minoring in human rights. Because I won the Chancellor Scholarship at UMass, it allowed me to go to Cambodia. I was working at the CNU Hospital Center of Hope. I was in the place of something horrible that had happened. I could either go home and kind of forget about that experience and kind of block it out, or I could do something so that things like that never happened again. UMass provides me with opportunities that I wouldn't get anywhere else and gives me a global perspective in a public setting. I definitely transformed at UMass. Joined by men's basketball head coach Jason Harrison. Coach, you had a, a pretty eventful summer. You've got a kid on the way, but the big news, you traveled to Africa, a trip with Yes Africa to Benin. And how was that experience for you? Uh, it, was, it was great. I mean, it was humbling to be a part of such an experience. Um, you know, it, it was just, it was tremendous going over there. You know, just kind of seeing the way that they live, the way that we live, the, the similarities, the differences. Um, the, the one refreshing part was is that basketball is basketball, so the language barrier and kind of all that went out the, went out the air immediately as soon as we threw the ball up. Well, this was something that Charlie Titus started quite a long time ago, the longtime men's basketball head coach, and you were following his footsteps. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program and what you were able to accomplish over there? Yeah, uh, my part of the program um, is the athletic piece. Um, there, is an, there is an educational piece to it. Um, good thing for everybody. I was not teaching that part, but the athletics piece, um, you know, it was basically a coach's camp. So I was able to go over there and kind of kind of teach the way that we teach our coaches over here. Um, and the thought was that hopefully that they'll teach their kids and, you know, it'll just kind of infect basketball over there as well, the, way, the same way that it's done it over here. Um, you know, but with that being said, we had over 100 kids at the camp, and, and all of those kids were eager to learn. They, they just loved being there. I love being there, and it, it makes it easier to be a part, of, be away from your family and be so far away um, when they're just so invested, in, and, you know, they just love being there as well. You've obviously been invested in the basketball coaching life for a while. Were there any big differences between that camp and maybe over in Benin in terms of maybe the – the, the style of play there, but maybe even just how much the kids cared and, and what the kids focused on? Yeah, well, you know, f for first of all, the, the kids are very similar to our kids. Um, you know, the way they act, the way they interact with each other, you know, that was very similar to being any gym in America that I'd ever been in and when there's a camp going on. Uh, there's a few differences, like, you know, when the water break comes, you know, their water might come in bags where our kids are a little more spoiled and, and they each have their own 32 ounce Gatorade. Um, our kids here were a little bit more concerned about, you know, if somebody stepped on their new Nikes um, or how their Under Armour shirts looked. Um, over there it was just, again, eagerness to learn. Um, the enthusiasm was, was great from those kids, um, from the coaches, from the community, from the school that we were around. So now the next question is, are you looking forward to going back in future years? Yeah, not only am I looking forward to going back, you know, I, hopefully next year I can bring a few coaches with me. Um, we can hit a few countries while we're over there. Um, and just, you know, it's basketball. It's the game of basketball. It's, you know, you, you have organizations like Basketball Without Borders. And it, and it truly is. I mean, the game is just, it's, for me, it's like a language of love. Um, so I'm, I'm just excited to be a part of it. And for me, being a Division three basketball player and a Division three basketball coach, to have basketball, the game itself, bring me to Africa, um, that was just amazing to me. Coach, that was towards the end of your summer, but I know you spent a lot of the summer recruiting, adding some assistant coaches to your team. Uh, can you give us a preview of this season and why you're excited for year two? You, you know, I think uh, there's, there will be some fresh faces, um, coaches as well as players. I think overall last year as a program, we kind of had to learn to compete. Um, whereas I think this year, the onus is going to be a little bit more on learning how to win. Um, so I'm excited to take that step with the program. I'm excited to have some of the new people that are with us, some of the old people that are with us. Um, go, I don't want to go in too, in, in too depth on, on the kids because, you know, I, I don't think that they've earned that yet, some of the new guys. But some of the returning guys, you know, guys like Sam Freeman, guys like Dan Powers, um, these kids have done a great job over the summer, you know, helping our program take the next step. 
Well, Coach, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on some great charity work, and we're looking forward to the men's basketball season. We'll take another commercial break, and then we'll be back with our third interview as we continue looking at our Summer Spotlight Series. Psychology is about understanding the individual and understanding the mind. The main reason why I want to combine psychology and business degrees is because I want to understand the business decisions that are made. I'm Nurchin Chalabi. I'm from Turkey originally. I'm a senior at the five-year BA to MBA program at UMass Boston. I think in management, the biggest mistake you can make is to not listen. So I want to be able to step into a company and say, here's what you're doing now, and here's how you can improve it. I moved here when I was 16 for high school. Moving from Turkey, it was a rough journey for me because when you don't really speak the language that well, and when you don't really fit in the crowd, it's very easy to disappear. But I decided not to give up, so, and UMass helped me. <laughs> I wanted to be able to improve myself. I wanted to be able to try new things, and I think UMass gave me a really good head start on that. This is Beacon 360 with Steve Wachowski, and today I am joined with Vicki Wadowitz, uh, uh, UMass Boston tennis player, and talking about great summers. You had a great summer. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? I did. So um, in August, I went to um, Iringa, Tanzania for um, two weeks. Um, I shadowed physicians at Iringa Regional Hospital, which um, like was a very small hospital in sort of like a village rural area, um, and I learned a lot, and it was amazing. So how did you get this internship? Was it within UMass, or was it within uh, the city of Boston? So it actually wasn't um, within UMass. Um, it was through this company called Gap Medics um, that provides like international um, hospital placements, but paying for it, I actually got $3,000 um, from the Beacons Summer um, Success Fellowship, which is offered through the UMass Boston um, Career Services. So do you have any favorite memories or favorite stories that you'd like to share with us today? Um, yeah. <laughs> there's, on Beacons 360? There's so many, um, but my favorite one was probably um, seeing both um, a C-section and a natural childbirth for the first time, and then actually um, I got to receive um, the baby, so I was the first one to hold the baby when it was coming out of the womb. So that does sound that amazing. Exciting. So it's your senior year this year at UMass, and where do you really think about your future going, and uh, what do you think about you doing next year? Um, so I, yeah, I'm graduating in May, and I'm looking into applying for medical school. I'm going to take my, my test and... Um, submit my applications this spring, so I'm looking for a fall of 2018. Okay, well we're on to the tennis side. This is the highest preseason ranking for women's tennis uh, ever in Beacon's history. How is your program on the rise? Well, I mean, I think last year we were ranked six and we finished four, so I'm hoping that being ranked four this year we can finish even higher and prove everybody wrong like we did last year. So would you say it's kind of uh, newcomers, you have three new people coming in uh, and you guys look bigger, faster, and stronger, would you say that's uh, Jeffrey Abs in the weight room or would you just say that you guys are just uh, recruiting better players? Yeah, I mean, Jeff has definitely helped us a lot um, in the weight room, you know, we go in there, we do our thing, but um, um, I think the three new players have added a lot to the team and even our returners too, like we all are looking better. So so you guys are one and two right now, but you have a lot of conference games coming up. Um, your next game is at Worcester State, which is a conference game. How do you kind of prepare for these games coming up? Um, well, that's actually our first conference game um, of this season is Saturday. And I think um, our previous matches have really helped us prepare and also looking into you know who we played last year, how we did last year, that really helps us prepare too. Well, UMass Women's Tennis will be back here September 20th against Salem State, so stop on by. And Vicki, thank you for coming in and tell us about your summer. 
UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus, I saw that there was a lot of diversity. There's a lot of people um, here. There's a lot of international students, so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. We're sisters. We're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community, so each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences we have an internship at the end or it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out, like telling you which classes to choose. And welcome back to Beacons 360. It's our final segment of this episode number one. Seth Lorensky joined by Steve Witkowski. We'll take a look at our top play of the week right now. Each week we'll have a top play, giving you a look at some of the very talented athletes we have here on campus. This week it's men's soccer from their contest at Wentworth. Jake Davenport's first collegiate goal and some of the passing on this play is just phenomenal as the Beacons diced up the Leopards' defense. So you see it here, it all starts with Marcelo Cunha sending it ahead for Mateus Reese, up ahead for Davenport making one of his first collegiate appearances to Joshua Kang, and then Davenport with his second touch able to beat the Leopards goalie. Steve, what really impresses you on this play as we take a second look? I mean the teamwork, uh, last year they just fell short in the NCAA. Uh, tournament and it's exciting to see how well they're doing already with not their whole team so it, it should be exciting when they come to UMass uh, in late late September and it should be fun yeah I mean that next game for UMass Boston on the road but we'll finally get to see the Beacons on the 24th of September they'll take on Rhode Island College in a conference championship rematch and in fact it's the men's soccer conference game of the year so the little east conference will be with us as well we're going to give a shout out to our crew today we dealt with some technical issues started a little bit late but we're very happy with our first production here of beacons 360 my name is seth lorensky your producer joined by anthony searles alex carasoto david Wahlberg. couldn't do it without my main man, Steve Witkowski, and of course, our three guests, Jake Beverlin, Jason Harris, and Vicki Wadowitz. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and we'll be back next Monday right here on Beacons 360.